So our next two pot kits for October are the Button Fern Kit and the Boston Fern Kit. So I'm going to put them up together and show you how to look after them together because they're both very similar in terms of care. They come in um, the kit with these beautiful 14 centimetre um, ribbed terracotta pots and saucers. Um, these again are my own um, from the garden in the studio, um, so they're a bit battered, um, but you'll see that they are still so beautiful. They've got watermarks on them, um, they're looking a bit sort of tired and rustic, um, but in my opinion that they just become more beautiful as they get older. So we have in your kits the gravel, the compost, and the moss. And if you have just watched the plant <laughs> kit tutorial, I really apologise, I forgot to put the moss on the plant kit. I think I got too excited talking about ferns and how to look after them, so I just completely <laughs> forgot to add it. Um, but I will show you how to do that now, but if, you just, if you're just watching just really quickly to see how on earth you put the moss on, super simple, you just break it into little bits and just simply pop, pop it on top of where the sort of the bare compost is. And that's all it's all you need to do. So I'm sorry, I think I just got overexcited. Um, okay, so let's pop these two up and I will add the moss onto these two um, if I remember. Okay, so let's add in the gravel first. So the gravel just goes in the bottom of your pots. This is for drainage so that the um, roots aren't sat in sort of water for prolonged uh, periods of time. And then you can add in a little bit of compost because the pot will go down. So I would say a handful of your compost. You just gently sort of pop that, pat that down, sorry. Okay, and then let's pop the Boston fern in this one. So make sure you've given your ferns a good drink on arrival. So they like to be kept damp, but we'll go through care and all that kind of thing in a moment. And then just gently making sure you're careful of all the kind of fronds around the edge, just gently push the compost down. Now we're just going to add in a little bit around the top. Now you'll see there's not really a lot of space, but it's just to give it some added sort of nutrients from, <clears throat> excuse me, from the new compost. Okay, and then just gently press that down. Okay, so that's the Boston, and then I'll come back and do the moss in a second. I haven't forgotten. Okay, and then this is the button fern. Now, this is quite an unusual fern, and we did them last year um, in our, I don't know if it was September or October kits, and they sold out so quickly, and I had so many messages saying how much people loved them. They are quite different. Um, they just, the reason I think they're called button ferns is because each of the little leaves just look like a little button opposite each other on the sort of fronds of the fern. So yeah, oh, I'm touching it. Okay, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go through um, the care, but basically one of the really big tips on ferns to keep them healthy is not to touch them too much, but it's really, really hard not to sort of run your fingers through them. Anyway, don't do as I do. So let's pop this up. But I'll explain more about all that in a second. Okay, so we've got the compost at the bottom on top of the gravel and then you simply pop your button fern in and compress that down. Let's move it a little. Come over a bit. So just gently push it down. And then the same as with the Boston, just add in a little layer of fresh compost. And then gently push that down. Okay, now let's add the moss to these ones. Um, but if you're watching this and you have the planter kits, the scallop planter kits, it's the same, same sort of thing. So you have your flat moss, which is this one. So this is the one that has 
sort of twigs and um, sometimes pine cones and little kind of woodland kind of things in it. And then you have the bun moss, <coughs> excuse me, which is this sort of denser, sort of chunkier kind of moss. Okay, I'm just going to add some flat moss around the edges and then I'll do some bun moss. I'm just going to take this twig out. So that just simply goes around the edge. Now, the reason for the moss is one, it looks nice and it finishes um, the kit off beautifully, in my opinion. But the other reason is when you are, have a plant that needs to be kept damp, not dry out, the moss acts as a sort of, um, oh, I'm just taking the root system off there for the bun moss. I'm just kind of taking the brown root system off. Um, so when you put the moss on top of the compost, it basically stops it, the moisture in the compost evaporating so quickly. So it keeps it nice and damp um, for longer. The key though, is not to water the moss when you water. So it doesn't matter if the moss gets wet, that isn't, that's not the reason. You just need to make sure that you're not sort of watering and it's going over the moss and then it's stop, stopping there. You need to make sure that that water is going right down. Um, so what I would say is when you do water, if you get water coming into your saucer from draining down, that's a good thing. It means that you've watered thoroughly, but then just make sure you discard any water that's in the saucer so that the plant isn't sat in sort of, you know, stagnant water for a long period of time. Okay, so that's the moss on the button fern. And then the Boston fern. So in terms of care, so number one, keep them damp, not waterlogged, but don't let them dry out. They like to be you know, just kept damp at all times. Um, try not to touch them too much. So if you have found in the past you've had ferns in your home and they've started to go brown and you don't know why, because they're damp and they're in an indirect sun and they're, you know, some of the leaves are fine, but some are going brown. It could be more than likely because the oils on our hands sort of basically kills off the fern. So as tempting as it is to kind of run your fingers through like I was just doing then, um, try not to. I mean, you can touch them in terms of, you know, when you pot it up, that's fine. But just try not to kind of, you know, stroke it too much. Um, uh, the other thing is to um, keep it quite humid. So the best way to do that if you don't have well, if it's not in a bathroom or in a kitchen, the best way to do that is to spritz it. So you can get those spritz guns from Amazon really cheaply, put some water in it and you spritz it every couple of days. It will really, really benefit from that. So those are the care tips. Oh, and keep it in sort of dappled, indirect sunlight. So in the plant tutorial that I've got the moss on, I spoke about how, what indirect sunlight is because I, never understood it you know before as a florist didn't understand what what that meant but what it means is you don't want your fern sat on a south-facing windowsill where the sun is blazing in they basically will be burned by the sun so the best place for them is in indirect sun which basically means anywhere where they're getting sunlight but it's not a blazing sun south-facing windowsill you know that kind of thing so for example in my home, I have a northwest, northwest facing kitchen. They could be anywhere in that room and be absolutely fine because the sun doesn't beat down um, on the in, through the window in that room. Um, I wouldn't put them in my living room because that's in the, that's in the south facing. Although I could, um, what I mean is I wouldn't put them on the windowsill in my living room. I would put them sort of further back so that they're then getting indirect sunlight. So that's about it for these ferns. So there we have it. We have the. Boston fern kit and the button fern kit.